Welcome back to session eight of Introduction to Trauma-Informed Care. We've spent quite a bit of time covering essential skill number one, understanding the impact of trauma, and essential skill number two, increasing felt safety. For the rest of this course, we will be looking at emotions and behaviors. It's important to clarify that some kids act in while others act out, or kids may alternate between both. Acting in may include anxiety, sadness, social withdrawal, and people-pleasing, whereas acting out may look like aggression, conduct issues, and oppositional behavior. Though the acting out behaviors may seem more problematic, both need attention. In this session, we will begin to look at essential skill number three, helping children reduce overwhelming emotions by building connections. From the beginning of life until the end, all of us share two great needs, attachment and orientation. We discussed attachment in session five. Attachment answers the question, who are my people? And orientation answers the questions, what am I supposed to be doing and how am I to act? Unfortunately, many children and adolescents who are lacking attachment and orientation with safe adults find it with each other. However, when they disconnect from adults, their growth, maturity, and development slow or even stop. We need to bring them back into relationship with adults who will give them their attachment and orientation. Now, let's explore parenting styles because these greatly influence the quality of attachment and orientation. Parenting styles are the way a parent engages with his or her child on a daily basis. This includes the parent's level of expectations, performance, behavioral demands, how they handle rules, and style of discipline. You may not be the parent of a child from a hard place, but I think you'll see that this discussion can apply to your interactions with kids as well. Psychologists share that there are four parenting styles, authoritarian, authoritative, permissive, and uninvolved. High structure, but low nurture, is the authoritarian parenting style. High structure and high nurture is the authoritative parenting style. The parent has rules and boundaries, but also gives the child a voice and lots of care and affection. Low structure, but high nurture is considered a permissive parenting style. And low structure with low nurture is uninvolved or neglectful parenting. Some people think that a childhood with no rules or boundaries would be great, but research has found that high structure and high nurture, the authoritative style, is the one that results in the lowest amount of acting out behaviors in adolescence and helps produce good judgment making and decisions. Now we're gonna look at ways to build connection with children and adolescents because it doesn't always come natural or easy. But before we take a look at what to do right, we're gonna take a look at connection gone wrong. This is the negative reaction cycle. Like the attachment cycle, this cycle starts with a need. We know that kids from hard places can struggle using their words to get their needs met. So this child may express his need with what looks like bad behavior because his stress response is kicked in and he's in hyper arousal. In the negative reaction cycle, the adult reacts to the poor behavior rather than respond to the need behind the behavior. This results in continued hyper arousal from the child and continued reaction from the adult. It's likely the adult has also entered a state of hyper arousal in this scenario, but remember, a dysregulated adult can never regulate a dysregulated child. This is an example of what the negative reaction cycle could look like. I get home from work exhausted and I forgot to think about what I was gonna cook for dinner and my son bursts in the door getting home from school and he demands, give me something to eat. Clearly he has a need and he's in hyper arousal that looks like and is bad behavior. Well, I've had a long day too, I'm hungry too, so I react to that demand and with sarcasm, I look around incredulously, right? And I say, I'm sorry, are you talking to me? I'm sure you're not talking to me because I am your mom 
and you don't tell me what to do. Now, I've poked at the already aroused child as though I think he's going to say, you're right, mom. I'm sorry that I told you what to do. No, he says, I just did tell you what to do. Why don't you get me something to eat? Well, I am the adult here, and who's going to win this struggle? Me. So now I say, uh, you'll be lucky to ever eat in my kitchen again, but you sure aren't getting anything to eat now. Go to your room. His response, your cooking sucks anyway, and I would rather be in my room than hanging out with you. And off he goes. Do I feel good? No. Did I just win? No. Does he feel good? No. We've spun down into complete disconnection because he didn't express his need well and I reacted instead of responding. Maintaining connection is key. Dr. Gordon Neufeld says that there is a correlation between my emotional connection to a child and my tolerance of their behavior. I have definitely found this to be true. For three years, my husband and I were foster parents to a house of teenage boys. There was one boy who was kind to my little ones, funny, always willing to lend a hand. I was very connected with him. And frankly, I let him get away with some things like breaking curfew a little bit, maybe being sloppy. There was another boy who was incredibly rude, unhelpful, disengaged, and I hate to say it, but I didn't feel as connected to him. And I didn't let him get away with anything. We really do need to work on our connection with the children and adolescents we work with and care for so that we can tolerate their behavior to the point that we aren't willing to let it break our connection, no matter what. It's not that bad behavior is okay. It's that it cannot disrupt our connection. Now, for the rest of this session, we're gonna look at two ways to build connection using the arousal relaxation cycle that we talked about in session five and the positive interaction cycle. The arousal relaxation cycle is child initiated and it begins with the child's needs. Meeting needs builds attachment and connection. It helps children and adolescents learn to relax and trust us. Just as attachment is built in babies, it can be built in older children by meeting their needs. Next, let's look at the positive interaction cycle, which is parent or adult initiated. In this cycle, the adult purposely initiates with the child or adolescent based on what they like to do. You spend intentional time together doing activities that matter to them because you want them to know they matter to you. Together, you both experience increased self-worth, connection, and positive growth. When my husband and I were fostering those teen boys, we knew we had to find a way to connect with them, not only because they were teenagers, which we had never parented before. They were Latino teen boys who'd grown up in a city, and we grew up in the country in the United States. So we suddenly became big fans of Mexican soccer. And I actually spent some time and memorized players' names and jersey numbers so that I could sit down with them and engage in the game. As we spent that time together doing something that they really enjoyed, they felt invested in and became willing to open up and risk talking about deeper things as well. In the next session, we will continue the journey of looking at strategies for connecting that we can use with the children and adolescents in our lives.